untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green deck updated with Kamigawa Neon Dynasty as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features three copies of Invoke the Ancients, a 5 mana sorcery creating a pair of 4-5 green spirit creature tokens with our choice of Vigilance, Reach or Trample, a card that also plays very nicely with Isika's Chariot which can potentially make copies of those 4-5 tokens. And since we're usually choosing Trample, it also plays quite well with Unnatural Growth, a 5 mana enchantment, saying at the beginning of each combat we get to double the power and toughness of each creature we control until end of turn, so we could be attacking with a pair of 8 powered tramplers, which is usually enough to end the game. It's actually a close decision whether we play a 2-2 split between Unnatural Growth and Invoke, or in this case a 3-1 split, since I wanted to try out Invoke, and it's also better to draw multiple Invokes as opposed to multiple Unnatural Growths, otherwise you risk having a hand without any creatures in it. And then another new addition from Kamigawa is Jugan Defense Temple, a saga that on chapter 1 creates a 1-1 token that can tap for green mana, helping us ramp into our various 5 drops. Then on chapter 2 we get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each of up to 2 target creatures, and finally transforms into Remnant of the Rising Star, a 2-2 flyer that can sink additional mana into our creatures that enter the battlefield to put plus 1 plus 1 counters on them, and if we control 5 or more modified creatures, meaning creatures with counters on them, then Remnant gets plus 5 plus 5 and Trample, and also keep in mind that those counters on Invoke the Ancients also count as modifications, so that also synergizes with our Remnant. Then looking at the rest of our deck, it's kind of your usual suspects, with that 1 mana Ascendant Pack Leader, a 2-1 that can grow over time as we play more expensive spells, we've got Blizzard Brawl as our classic removal spell to go with our Snow Lands to potentially take a creature out, make our creature indestructible in the process as well. Then at 2 mana Sculptor of Winter will also help us ramp by untapping our Snow Lands, We've got Tangled Florahedron, can be played as a tap land or as a 2 mana accelerant, and then Werewolf Pack Leader, a very powerful 2 drop that can potentially draw cards thanks to pack tactics, and can also be pumped up to synergize with our natural growth. Then we've got Old Growth Troll at 3 mana as just a very efficient creature that when it dies leaves behind an enchantment that can turn into another 4-4 trampling token. And then of course our Aseka's Chariot alongside two copies of Ulfenwald Oddity, a 4-4 trampler with haste that can also transform to help pump the rest of our team. And then the mana base no longer has Faceless Haven which is now banned in standard, but we still have four copies of Lair of the Hydra alongside 20 snow-covered forests. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a very nice hand. Pack Leader into Sculpture, into hopefully Oddity, and then a Natural Growth, nice Curve Topper. Facing a red deck. Usually mono green slightly favored against red aggro, but red whites with a turn to aspirants is a different story. Still happy to play oddity and then yeah, a natural growth gonna be quite strong next turn. Opponent might be playing Angel Fire Ignition. Spellbinders, unfortunate, dealing or growth by a couple turns. So now I'm feeling less confident. Opponent's gonna hit us for six. Well, invoke the Ancients, not a bad draw. So play that before attacking to grow a pack leader. Although they would still trade for Spellbinder most likely. Making one with Reach and maybe one with Vigilance is okay here. And then I can just attack with Oddity. Since I don't want to trade for a Spellbinder here. Also not too far from potentially transforming Oddity. Which could also pump the team, so no need for Trample, as this will trample our team as well.
Another Aspirant. Grow Spellbinder. So they can still punch past our Reach creature potentially. But no attack, and a Florahedron. We can play as a tap land or as a creature. There's no huge difference here, as we'll have another land next turn. I guess the upside of playing it as a creature is that if we draw another land, I'll have an extra creature in play. Which is reasonable, although it could be vulnerable to removal. But I guess Sculpture would be as well. Do we have any attacks is a question. Could send 4-5 Vigilance. They double block with, let's say, Etching Aspirants. That's still okay for me. What if I attack with everyone? Then 4-4 four, four on 4-4. Four, four. They can trade etching for my pack leader. Spellbinder plus Aspirin double blocks a 4-5. Certainly an argument for an all-out attack. Although given that I'm likely just playing a natural growth next turn or activating oddity, that doesn't seem necessary. So, yeah, I think I'll play Florahedron just to get an extra body out there. And pass. Also had a Lair of the Hydra I could have activated for three to attack alongside everyone else. But our opponent did still have two mana untapped, so if they did have some interaction, it might not have been a guaranteed lethal attack. So hopefully... A natural growth will uh, make things a little easier next turn. Or we can again just activate the oddity. Another spellbinder doesn't see anything. Spellbinder attacks in the hopes that we block, I'm sure. Alright, we get to untap. Play a natural growth. And smash. Alright, Putin still seems very dead. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Couple accelerants. Pack leader, good blocker and attacker. Can benefit from those plus one counters on chapter two. Double pack leader, also nice. Against blue red. How do we want to sequence? Make that teamer. Yeah, I'm kind of lacking pack leader on two over sculpture. Sculpture has the advantage of letting us double two drop on the following turn, but might be more vulnerable to a removal spell. Opponent goes digging with iteration. So not entirely sure what deck our opponent is playing. Yeah, playing a tapped lair plus another pack leader seems fine. Or we can play defense the temple. And then the two plus one counters would also be enough to enable pack tactics next turn. Sure. A little weaker to removal on pack leader. But more mana efficient overall maybe. And the sooner we get a rising star, the better. It also times out where if the opponent has a 5 mana sweeper, we get our rising star afterwards. So we don't have to fear overextending too much. So probably still gonna double 2 drop here. Although it does play into one of those aforementioned sweepers. Just seems like we gotta keep up the pressure while we can. Uh, 
And then next turn I can sink a bunch of mana into Sculptor, thanks to the Rising Star. So big turn coming up, can they wipe the board? Yep. Another defensive temple, not a bad follow-up. So I can play Sculptor and defensive temple, but then we're not adding any counters. Or I can play defense and put two counters on it. It's maybe slightly better here. And there's a gold pain. Down to 16 we go. No removal response is a good sign. And then play Sculptor. I could add four counters to it or three counters. Four counters, of course, plays better around another burn down the house. But three counters lets me attack, and our opponent's at 13, so that's a two-turn clock. So I think uh, we'll attack, and then Sculptor with three counters is enough. And that Lair of the Hydra, also very important. Opponent hits us for four. Hopefully they won't be able to take any extra turns here. While Alrin's Epiphany is banned, there's still the Author Cleave card available. Still haven't figured out what the green is for. Alright, opponent does have another board wipe, sadly. So the different line of growing sculpture might have worked out slightly better. But I'll uh, play a large sculpture now. And then we still have Flare of the Hydra, which can potentially attack for lethal if we draw land. Not our gold span. So yeah, kind of staggering your creatures with a saga plays quite nicely against sweepers. Blizzard Brawl. Is probably not necessary, so we'll just animate Hydra. And then they would need two removal spells. Which at this point seems unlikely. I guess X equals four is enough, and then I can still Blizzard Brawl if necessary. Who invoke Calamity can cast the Sweeper at instant speed. Okay. So we're gonna make some Chum Blockers instead. But we can still Blizzard Brawl at least. Bowden might have a bounce spell, maybe, to save their own gold span. Ooh, a Kazul's Fury to fling it at our face. That would have been lethal otherwise. Now we're at two facing a 1-1 Devil. Unexpected Windfall goes digging. Bowden's got five mana, so if they have another Invoke Calamity, we're dead. It's 
going to be a body of research that explains the green mana and the Kazul's Fury at the same time. Okay, so our opponent's got a 42-42. We drew a land. So if I activate two layers of the Hydra for two each, that should be enough. Tank with all, opponent's got two blocks, and we get in for four. So it ended up being a very close game. And got to see an interesting deck from our opponent as well. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an excellent opening hand. Pack leader into sculptor into maybe turn three chariots if they kill... Sculpture, we still have a turn 3 troll. Up against a white aggro deck. Alright. Do I want to trade pack leader for initiates? Probably not when there's a chariot incoming next turn. Alright, Thalia prevents pack leader from attacking. And also prevents us from playing a chariot here so we'll double two drop instead I think spellbinder makes chariot even more expensive Although we could still cast it if we draw a land. Okay, so I could double block Thalia with... Has to be Sculptor plus something else. Let's make it Pack Leader. Opponent can kill Sculptor, kill Thalia, and then we can cast our Chariot with a land still. going to be a blizzard brawl instead still quite good so we can troll and then do we want to kill a spellbinder i think we do as a flying threat can be quite annoying sculpture or third snow permanence also quite important And for three, can pump the team now. And we get to play a chariot now. And troll can attack. Trade I'm happy to make. We'll see if they decide to attack here. Okay, so could crew chariots to block with it. They could have a wandering emperor giving the adversary plus one and first strike. Otherwise my instinct would be to put a cat on the adversary. If they give initiate first strike, goes up to five. So then a double block would be pretty ugly. Although the Emperor could also exile Old Growth Troll right now or when it attacks. So possible I just put a cat on Adversary and then just don't bother blocking Initiate even though it could remove its counters to destroy the Chariot as well by paying 3 mana. So let's do that. All right, it worked. And it's going to be another initiates. And our opponent passes. 
So they can destroy Chariot at instant speed. That's probably their intention, unless they've got, again, the Wandering Emperor they want to use. We have an Oddity now. So... If their play is destroy chariots, am I okay missing out on a little bit of damage? Because Emperor would probably be worse for me, exiling a troll. Start by playing Oddity, because that's going to happen no matter what. Gross pack leader. So if I were to crew chariots and their place to destroy it, then I'm still attacking for 12. That's pretty good. If I crew chariot and they have the Wandering Emperor, then they probably exile Oddity. And then we have chariots, so yeah. I think that's a fine compromise. Opponent does indeed use the initiate, that's fine. No real reason to leave anyone back. I guess they could have like a Luminarch Aspirant, put a counter on initiate, train the other one. But if that's their play, we're also not in any trouble. Brutal Gathar goes for Troll. Alrighty, so we've got six mana, one short of activating the Oddity. If I activate Lair of the Hydra for three, that looks pretty good here, so probably no need to play our Saga. Alright, and our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Sculptor into maybe an oddity. Do I want to play a tapped florahedron? I think I do. Since we'll be curving out for the most part. I twitch points towards a blank green sacrifice deck. Prioritize Sculptor over Pack Leader for now. Especially with Eye Twitch that wants to be chum blocking anyway. And then, yeah, we could be curving Oddity into Invoke the Ancients into a natural growth, which would be quite exciting. Ooh, Asika's Chariots is probably even better, as that sets up copying Invoke the Ancients. Maybe a little bit more vulnerable to Meat Hook Massacre for two. Although, as soon as we play Invoke, we can still copy one of the tokens right away. Also doesn't give the opponent a chance to chum block with Eye Twitch in case they need to learn for anything. Also diversifies more against a potential Binding the Old Gods. Serpent's just hanging back for now. And yeah, going Invoke, copy the token seems quite powerful. Even if they could have instant speed spot removal to kill whichever token I try and copy. I think that's fine. So... We'll go for it. And then both trample, I think. Crew Chariot. Could copy a cat token if we want to kind of hedge our bets a little bit, so that if they're holding instant speed removal, they kill the 2 2 instead, maybe, and then we get to keep our tramplers for a natural growth. I guess that's reasonable. Opponent Shum's Chariot. Oh, 
And if their play now is a meat hook massacre for two, we're not all that sad as we get to attack with our large tokens and copy them with chariot. So just trying to hatch my bets a little bit. And then if they don't wipe the board and we play a natural growth, that's going to be difficult for them to overcome. Their opponent just jumping with Eye Twitch, still hasn't really done much else. Land comes into play tapped. And Environmental Sciences. Their opponent seems just dead on board without us doing anything else right now. But uh, we've got another surprise in store. So the plan here is to play a natural growth, wait for the trigger, to then crew chariot with a cat token. So I'll go full control just to make sure we don't mess it up. So natural growth triggers, then we crew chariot, then we attack, and then our opponent takes a million damage. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Up against an aggressive white deck. Turn 2. Is there an Aspirant or a Thalia? Or a Boast? Do I want to trade here? I do have an oddity coming up soon, but generally speaking I'm fine trading against a white deck, as individually our threats are more powerful. And our opponent's just gonna boast. Ooh, alright, growth is a reason not to trade. Although between Thalia and Spellbinder, it's difficult to resolve against Mono White. It's gonna be a Spellbinder. They could go for oddity which would be my play next turn, but still leaves us with a solid 3-mana play. And actually take Defensive Temple. So we could expect another Spellbinder next turn, but as it turns out, we drew another powerful 5-drop. And I'm fine with the double block, although with growth maybe we were not. They could of course just remove the Oddity. But then we get to play our Invoke into a natural growth, hopefully. Right, Skyclave Exiles Sculpture to delay our 5-drop. And we've got three 5-drops basically here, so yeah, that was quite effective. So now I don't get to do anything. Probably don't want to attack either. So they managed to throw off our curve successfully. But Invoke could still stabilize us nicely. Valor Stance also works. And now the Initiate threatens to destroy a natural growth. So good thing we drew Invoke. And then... Maybe one reach, one trample. Could make both reach in case they remove one of them. But trample seems pretty good with a natural growth. Vigilance also. Alright, let's go reach and vigilance then. Still have the troll for trample. The Wandering Emperor main phase. Can grow Spellbinder. So hopefully Initiate is kind of the problem now, as that threatens to destroy my enchantment. So might be better off going Troll plus Florahedron. And then the Vigilant token can go after Wandering Emperor still. Does the other token want to attack as well? Probably need some blockers back. And if that goes sideways, they can exile it with the Emperor as well. So I think just Vigilant Token attacking. 
Going on chumps. And then we'll diversify a little bit here. That also makes our growth more effective if the opponent doesn't keep up mana for initiates. Alright, so this is shaping up to be an interesting game. Spellbinder can hit for 5. We'll take it. Ooh, and a protector shield. Okay, so they won't be able to use initiate now at least, which means we get at least one unnatural growth trigger, which helps me take out the Wandering Emperor. And then if they want to use the initiate, they have to remove a counter from Spellbinder, and then our token can again block. So that's pretty huge. So we'll move to combats. So this deals 8 Trample. Protector Shield also prevents damage to Planeswalkers. So probably have to send more than just a troll at the Wandering Emperor. So we'll send a Vigilant one as well. That looks good. So want to keep some amount of blockers back so we don't die to a go wide attack. So this seems reasonable. So Emperor down. Until next time. And play Lair. Now there is Crawling Barons, which could also provide plus one counters for hopeful initiates, so that's still a concern. All right, they let the growth trigger. Attacking now is pretty strange, since we already get the double power. So now it's too late to blow up my unnatural growth. So we can block here, block there. So they might have messed up the sequencing, but yeah, as we mentioned, if they wanted to blow up my enchantment beforehand, it would not quite have worked out for them, because then Spellbinder only has 4 power. And Igancho also not quite enough. Oof, alright, so a very close game here against Mono White, and every single plus one counter ended up mattering. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty decent hand. Pack leader into troll, double troll even. Plays quite well into an unnatural growth, facing turn 1 Delver. I think I still like Pack Leader against blue decks, want to resolve cheap and packedful cards, as opposed to trying to ramp into things that get countered anyway. So if we can stick a troll and enable pack tactics, that would be ideal. Other opponent could easily have a bounce spell too here. No fading hope. Does Delver transform? It does, revealing double Sejiri Shelter. So a blue-white Delver deck. Well, we've got our pressure in place. Our opponent will need to come up with some removal. Because we're winning this race. Although double Delver hits pretty hard. Probably fine to play another troll alongside a tapped Florahedron. So we can maybe play a natural growth. Sun pack leader. Also tempting. Yeah, I guess we can ignore a natural growth, although it is kind of a close call here whether I play tap florahedron or pack leader. Now yeah, let's live the dream here. Try and go for a natural growth. I guess they could have some pump spells here, Homestead Courage, yeah, that's quite nice with a Drake. So they're up to 9 damage, still gonna be a little short of 14. So it doesn't look like a deck necessarily playing too many counter spells, seems more aggressively slanted. Which means we get to hopefully resolve a natural growth.
Now a bounce spell could still save them. Bounce a troll, chump a pack leader. You see a guard approach, can tap one down. Yeah, I think that does it. They have six on the way back. Still would have been short had we pumped pack leader as opposed to going for a natural growth. I guess the only other option was to maybe play the pack leader last turn, and then maybe we would have been able to get there here. So yeah, close game nonetheless. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Liking turn to Florahedron here. Or we can just curve out and go for tap Florahedron on one, turn to Hydra, turn two, play pack leader into defensive temple, and that will make the mana for chariots or maybe invoke the ancients. Upside of playing Florahedron first is that we can maybe play turn three chariots but it seems unlikely to play a Chariot into Invoke, because that would require a couple more lands. So I could actually buy tapped Florahedron on one, in case we don't draw any more lands. So, lots of interesting decisions early. So far no lands, so happy with my decision. Opponents on a white deck, so hope to dodge a Thalia. And there's a Thalia. Well, that is kind of awkward against our Saga, but can still blizzard brawl. And then try again next turn. Brutal Cathar goes for pack leader. And that's okay. And we'll just play chariot now. While playing Defense the Temple has the possibility of playing Invoke, there's too many ways for the opponent to mess it up. Another Brutal Cathar exiling my Monk. They could have another Thalia or Spellbinder to make it more expensive. So I think we'll just go for the high upside play of Chariot and to potentially Invoke if they don't mess anything up. Another Blizzard Brawl is nice. So we can potentially unlock our Werewolf, but we only have two Snow Permanents right now. So actually would be a trade, which is probably not acceptable here. But I could attack for four if I want. One potential concern is our opponent playing adversary to pump their team. And then I could have set up a double block. Whereas now we would take a pretty significant hit. But then next turn we get to invoke. Yeah, it's probably fine. Could also keep one token back to split the difference. But I think I'm okay initiating a race here. One reason to keep back one cat is Adeline. Okay, Raidan. Not what we wanted to see. And Portable Hole gets rid of a cat. We can Blizzard Brawl. Raidan if we find another Snowlands, which will enter tapped. Okay. I guess now with the plus one counters, I don't necessarily need the extra land. So I could Blizzard Brawl Raidan with my cat. And then still play Invoke the Ancients. Yeah, that works. Make sure not to play the land first. And then probably liking Vigilance and Reach in case of more flying creatures. Probably don't need Trample right now. Putin does have some dragons. So yeah, Reach and Vigilance. Also plays around the Wandering Emperor a little bit better. Next turn we'll get our Remnants and by playing another Saga, the Remnant already will get the plus five plus five bonus as we control five modified creatures. So yeah, showing the power of Jugon Defense the Temple. Have been quite impressed by it so far and happy to play it over something like Kazandu Mammoth, which the mono green decks used to play. 
Now, of course, there are some drawbacks, like we saw in this game, where uh, Thalia makes it more expensive. But generally speaking, I think you'll get more mileage out of the Saga. Also, kind of plays around sweepers, like we saw in the uh, teamer matchup. So there's quite a few advantages, even if it doesn't apply as much immediate pressure as a Kazandu Mammoth. But then again, it's not like the Great Henge is still in standard, where we actively want five powered creatures. There's still lots of chum blockers in the mono black decks as well, like Shambling Gas and Eye Twitch, which are cards that kind of punish something like Kazanu Mammoth, which doesn't inherently have Trample. So certainly a lot of ways to approach the mono green deck, but pretty happy with this build so far. So this is what I would use going forward until the metagame changes and you might have to make some adjustments. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.